Five steps to level up your teaching. My name is Sarah Thomas, by the way, and I am an English language arts slash technology teacher in Prince George's County Public Schools in Maryland. And my Twitter handle is Sarah the Teacher. I love connecting with educators all over. So if you would like to connect, then I would be more than happy to do so. Now, here are some resources for you if you'd like to follow along throughout the course of the presentation. So if you want to see, you know, what I'm referencing, then just go ahead and go to this link here and that will take you uh, to everything that I have mentioned. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna tell you guys a story. This is a story of a student that I knew. Um, this young lady would come into class, she would go sit in the back with her friends, whatever the teacher was saying, then she'd just kind of disengage, shut down, um, not really pay much attention, just crack up, hee hee hee, all kinds of things. The teacher would get so frustrated. When this young lady went home, then she would, be playing video games, talking on the phone, things of that nature. Now, how many of you know a student like that? Obviously, I can't see you, but I can imagine that almost everyone is probably shaking their head yes. I'm going to tell you, I know this student very, very well, and the reason that I know her is that she was me 20 years ago. 20 years ago, can you believe that? In 2014, um, then you have students that are even more so engaged in technology. Technology is their life. You see students walking around with cell phones in their hand um, all day. They're also very big into video games. Jane McGonigal, she is a video game designer who has given many, many TED Talks, and she is like a gamification guru. And she stated that as a planet, we spend three billion hours a week playing video games. Three billion hours. So that's going to lead us right into our topic of the day, which is gamification. So gamification, what it is, is using game design elements to engage and empower learners. So why would you want to gamify? It gives them choice. It also increases engagement. Um, so gamification is phenomenal. It's not just for the classroom. Um, you've probably seen it in other venues or apps such as Nike Plus. They gamify, you know, the more you run, the more points you get, things of that nature. Duolingo is an app that teaches different languages that also uses the gamification model. Um, you get like different levels, different stars. You get hearts if you, um, you know, the hearts break if you get the answer wrong. So it's very, very engaging. So before we get into all of that, I just wanted to share my learning process. So I learned about gamification through a workshop offered through my district by some phenomenal educators there. Um, definitely have to give a huge shout out to Barbara Leadall who organized it and Aaron Smith, um, the art guy on Twitter. He was very, um, very thorough in explaining the gamification process. Also, Selena Ward uh, was also facilitating that session. And from that that brief gamification session, I believe it lasted two days over the summer, then they gave a fantastic framework by which I gamified my entire, um, the entire 2013 to 2014 school year. So huge hat tip to them. Um, now this year at Google Teacher Academy, I was introduced to Chris Avilas, who, um, who has a different model for gamification. Um, that I implemented in my English language arts class. And Zena Brown, I met her at ISTE this summer, and she talked about gamification um, with parent involvement, which is phenomenal, mind-blowing, which kind of gave me the idea to use it for adults as well. Um, in addition, Chris Rogers in, um, in Georgia, he also uses a gamification system um, with staff, so for professional learning. Uh, he gamifies that at his school. And there are so many other gamification uh, experts that are just fantastic. Just look out for them on, on Twitter and on Boxer and things of that nature. So I'm going to give you a first example of uh, gamification, which is my technology class. So I am now going to go to my website, tinyurl.com forward slash Madame Thomas. That would be me. So this technology template, I haven't really changed it up much since last year. Um, you'll see that my English language arts one is slightly different, but okay, it's opening up. Here we go, here we go. So I am now scrolling down to where it says, um, oh goodness, come on thing. Okay, technology class structure. This item shop is new. I just added that this year. Um, so I'll talk more about the item shop for English in just a moment. 
but for technology, for my class structure, then just to show you how it looks right now, it's still a, li a living, breathing um, gamification board. So here we have um, our leaderboard. It's very, very basic, and I'm just doing this through a Google site, but the students can see their name, what stage they're on, um, things of that nature. You see that we have two students on stage one right now, but they level up every 2,100 points. I'll explain how that works in just a second. Down here, I have a current high score. What I do when my students are ready to level up, then I have them make an appointment with me and we go over their work together. But down here, we have rules for my classroom, um, for our class game. They can only do missions based on their current stage. They must do all missions at the tutorial level. Then after that, they get to select their missions. And this goes to student choice, which we were talking about before. It's highly engaging for students to be able to choose what they want to do. Um, and they can use any combination to reach the XP requirements. Um, some of the missions, just like video games, they allow for multiplayer gaming. The point totals don't don't reflect actual grades, so this is good because um, it handles or it addresses the uh, confidentiality aspect. And missions completed out of sequence will not be counted towards point totals because I strategically, on the advice of Aaron and Selena, placed the higher interest um, uh, missions towards the higher stages. Everybody wants to play Minecraft, so that's they have to work towards that Minecraft. Everybody wants to uh, design an app. They have to work towards that. So, um, so yeah, down here we have a top 10 high score leaderboard. And I'm going to have to change this date right now. Um, the good thing about it, though, is that we have students who no longer go to this school who are still on the leaderboard. So, um, for example, I believe, let me see. Yeah, these top three students right now, they have exited the school, but their score lives on in infamy. That is a huge motivator. So that was example one for technology class. Now, example two, this one's a little different. This one I have borrowed uh, from my good buddy Chris Avilas. And the reason that I also like this one is because it introduces uh, guilds. Um, we call them squads in my class, but it's set up on a leaderboard as guilds. I try not to change too much. Um, but let me go ahead and open that up and I will explain it. Let's pop right over here to ELA leaderboard. Let me show you how this is set up. This is a different model of gamification here. And Chris does a fantastic job. If you get his kit, he kind of walks you through the steps of how to set it up. This one is done through Google Spreadsheet. So once again, um, both of these were free to do. Let me just start right over here. Learner tags, you'll see that some students chose to stick with their first name. Some of them chose to pick pseudonyms. Um, a question I get a lot of the times is, is it shaming? Like if a student is towards the bottom of the leaderboard, do kids pick on him or her? And the answer is that I've never seen that happen. But I do give students the option to, to give me a gamer tag so that their, um, their progress is kind of anonymous. XP, this is their total number of points that they've earned in class. And the way we keep track of this is on Class Dojo. And I award them points based on um, based on the work that they do, uh, based on good citizenship, um, all kinds of different things. There's all different kinds of ways for them to earn points. So I keep track of their points through Class Dojo. And every 50 points, then I release 50 points to their spendable AP. Now, um, there's other ways for them to receive points as well, hidden levels, if you will, to the game that they don't necessarily know about, but I just kind of like to throw a monkey wrench in there because a lot of times that's what video games do. They'll just, you know, have some kind of bonus level or something like that. Um, there's a script that Chris made that comes with his package that kind of just lets you click on um, whatever student you want or whatever team you want and just assign them points. Um, as you see down here, some of them are negative. I'll take you to the item shop in a second and you'll see um, how students can like earn points or lose points or whatever. Um, this level thing, I don't understand at all how it's calculated, but it has worked very well, so I'm leaving it in. So we'll go with that. But every time they hit, um, like, if they hit a level 10, they each got um, 10 extra uh, AP, spendable points, uh, spendable AP. Um, when they le reached a level 20, they got 20 extra spendable points. So you can really flip this however you want to do it. It's all up to you. Um, that's just my system. And over here we have class, and finally we have guild. So th these are their squads. So it's good to be able to have it uh, set up like this because 
You can also look and see which teams are in the lead by going to the guild versus guild part. And you'll see right now, Migo Squad is in the lead, Tree Nation, Team Glory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Class versus class, usually third period keeps on kicking fourth period's rear end. Yeah, as you see they're doing right now. But uh, fourth period sometimes comes back. So it's a really good competition. Uh, it's a very friendly competition, and the students seem to really like it. So going back to Spendable AP, looking at the item shop, here are uh, some of the things that students can buy. Over here, you'll see that there are different categories. There are individual, automatic, and group, and even class purchases. Yeah, and we keep adding. And the way that this item shop came together is that I, um, I asked the students what they wanted, and they told me. So some of, some of that went into that. Also, um, some I, I borrowed from some of my buddies. Chris has an item shop, so some of his um, some of his items rewards, you know, showed up in here. Some of Tammy Neal as well, my friend in Florida. Some of her items show up um, in there. Um, and yeah, it's just been it's it's just been an amalgamation of <laughs> different items. And before I show you the different items, uh, I have to reference Chris one more time. He has a fantastic blog post about things that students really crave. And he has, uh, he says in order, they are status, access, power, and stuff. So I try to keep this in mind. Um, I try not to put too much stuff on here. So there are a couple of, of stuff items on here because the kids really, really wanted them. And I definitely wanted to listen to what they wanted, you know, definitely to, to engage them more. But, um, but yeah, the stuff is very limited. So you'll see here, Trading Spaces is a great one. Oh my goodness, fourth period has been using this like crazy. A player can trade him or herself with another player into another squad. And that's 50 experience points. And that's individual. Um, Benefactor, they've used that a bit, um, where they can use uh, their, their bonus points to buy something for their friends. Um, now, as you'll see, there are some automatic purchases. So these come out of their points Regardless, for example, tardy to the party, they come to class late without a pass. The late bird starves, they turn in a graded assignment late without making prior arrangements. Um, there's another one where they go to the bathroom or go to the locker. In rare cases, they might dip into the negative. You might have seen some kids um, on, the other, um, on the other board who, uh, who were in the negative value, and that was probably due to them um, going to their locker or going to the bathroom um, you know, when they had no points. So you, you can check it out. I've put this resource on there, um, on the resources sheet. So definitely check it out um, when you get a chance. I love this item shop. It's just really changed the class, um, the class dynamic in so many ways. So it has been, it has been amazing. Um, all righty, so that was the English language arts. So now let's talk a little bit about how to gamify. These are free, and um, this is based on the method provided by Aaron and Selena. So the very first step is to create a site or use an LMS. So you can create a site for your class. Um, I like um, I like Google Sites just because I, I gamify using Google, and um, you know it works very well. So the spreadsheet um, goes seamlessly into the Google site. Um, Wix is a very professional, clean-looking model uh, of, of creating a website. Um, also, Weebly, I've heard great things about Weebly. Strikingly, heard great things about that as well. I actually use Strikingly, and it's, it, it looks amazing. Um, so you can easily throw together a site or use an LMS, and uh, LMS stands for Learning Management System, so Edmodo, uh, Schoology, things of that nature. Um, just somewhere where you can like update the leaderboard if you choose to go that way. If you need any help with um, setting up like a, a website or anything of that nature, um, you can always visit my YouTube channel. If you type in Sarah the teacher and my computer's being extra slow, what else is new? Not much. Okay, Sarah the teacher, I'm the first one. And here, right here to walk you through uh, Google Drive, there's one down there for Wix. Have, 112 videos. Not all of them are, are, are walkthroughs, but a good majority of them are. So uh, definitely check that out if you need some help setting up a website. Um, and there's also stuff on there for Edmodo. So if you need uh, an intro on Edmodo, then definitely check, check that out. Step two, you got to create rules. Every game has rules. So 
just come up with a system, however you see your, um, your, your classroom game working, then just create rules. Um, I would suggest making it easy for the players to win because, you know, we're all in this to, to help the students and make it fun. Like, feel free to throw some monkey wrenches, some hidden levels, whatever, things in there just to keep them on their toes. Step three, create challenges. So um, you can plan and uh, hyperlink your assignments if that's what you want to do, just like how we saw in my example. So if you look under resources, and then you'll be able to see a Google Doc that I have. Um, I've set up some ideas that helped me plan for last year. Um, and definitely you can collaborate with other teachers um, or other educators who utilize gamification and uh, see what works for them and maybe exchange some challenges that way. Um, but just some... Some quick tips for design challenges. Of course, you want to set the level um, and maybe scaffold it. Um, set the XP. So, like I said, that's totally arbitrary. My system, they get 700 for classwork, 200 for assessments, 100 for homework. And that just kind of follows our county's model of grading 70% classwork, 20% assessments, 10% homework um, for tech. So, um, it's totally up to you what numbers you want to use. It's totally arbitrary. Um, and then you can set the number of players, permission, you know, like a video game. A rubric is always a good thing to have. Um, aligning it to standards, um, explicit directions, and a video walkthrough. YouTube is a great resource for tutorials, or you can make your own. And uh, if you borrowed it from somewhere, then, you know, give a link back. Just a shout out to the person you got it from. Step four, create a leaderboard. So we looked at my leaderboard. You can do this very, very easily directly on Google Sites by just making a table, or you can make a spreadsheet like we looked at in the second example. And step five, have fun. So make sure that you explain it to your parents and your students so that they understand what's going on exactly, because there will be a lot of questions, trust me. But as long as you have a good, a good handle on it, then it's fun for everyone. The parents have told me how much they, their student enjoys you know, being part of a gamified class. So it's, it's, just, it's just fantastic. It's changed the way that I teach 100%. Um, the kids are having fun. I'm having fun being game master, and sometimes I might even play along with them. So for further reading, you might want to check out Jane McConigal. I talked about her a little bit in the beginning, and she is a video game designer who gives multiple TED Talks. Um, she has some great resources about, um, about gamification. Also... Carl Kapp wrote a book all about gamification. So Google him, look him up, check him out on Amazon. Edbean.com is a great one. Michael Matera and a bunch of other great, great, great educators are on there. They're always sharing innovative ideas. I think that they have a whole section for gamification. And also Microsoft, the pil.network.com or pil slash network.com. Um, let me see. I wrote an article for them in the gamification um, and game-based section um, of their of their site. So the Microsoft Educators Network, Slow Computer, forgive me. All right, so this is Level Up Your Teaching right here. So this is, uh, let me see, it's loading. But um, it will give you more, um, more ideas and the link to the video that I have on how to gamify your class. Now, some people that I would like to share um, for gamification gurus. So definitely check these folks out right here. They are all fantastic. Um, there are so many more that I would like to shout out as well, but we just don't have the space on <laughs> the Haiku Deck slides. But definitely check up Level Up Ed, uh, which is a gamification um, Twitter chat going on 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday nights. And there are so many great conversations there. It's run by uh, Dason, who is on the list right there. And, um, you know, it's, it's just fantastic. Um, and you'll get some, some great ideas that way. All right, so if you want to connect, I would love to connect with you all and um, chat about uh, gamification. That's one of my very, very favorite things to talk about. Um, so once again, my name is Sarah Thomas. Sarah the Teacher is my Twitter handle and my blog. Uh, SarahJaneThomas.com is my official website. And if you want to join um, the D.C. Metro Area Google Educator Group, we talk about a variety of topics. Gamification keeps coming up, so check out that link. And if you're on Voxer, then just uh, feel free to email me or, uh, or tweet me your, your Voxer handle, and we'd love to have you in the group. So just wanted to thank you guys again for, um, for tuning in. 
had a great time talking gamification and uh, hope to hope to see you soon. So uh, keep leveling up your teaching. <laughs> Have a great one. Bye-bye.